Welkom bij Bink, de enige echte podcast voor en door de STVV-supporter. Het is begin september, Niel. Uh, de transferperiode is afgelopen. We hebben en, er speciaal op gewacht. We hebben er speciaal op gewacht, want het is een tijdsgereden dat we nog opgenomen hebben. Klopt. Uh, maar zoals jullie al kunnen zien, want het is vandaag ook mijn beeld, hebben we vandaag een heel bijzondere gast. Helemaal in thema, toch Niel? Dat klopt. We verwelkomen Mr. Pinto. Um, en we gaan deze podcast in het Engels doen. Correct. We gaan hem wel ondertitelen, want ik kan me voorstellen dat het uh, uh, wat moeilijk anders wordt. Uh, voor ons ook uitdaging, Niel, toch weer in het Engels uh, een podcast opnemen. Dat zijn we niet zo gewoon. Nee, dat klopt. Maar goed, uh, we gaan ons best doen. Voilà. Uh, we hebben trouwens ook aan jullie allemaal gevraagd om vragen te sturen. Dat hebben jullie massaal gedaan. Ik heb gisteren nacht nog tot denk ik half twaalf uh, vragen zitten verzamelen en proberen ergens... Uh, Meer dan plaats... 100 vragen. Meer dan 100 vragen, ja. ja. We kunnen ze dus niet allemaal <laughs> kunnen beantwoorden. Maar we gaan wel ons best doen, hè. Uh, alle andere vragen die we vandaag niet behandeld hebben, die hebben we ook overgemaakt aan de club. Uh, dus we zullen zien wat er daar nog van komt. Uh, we hebben nu eenmaal maar beperkt een uh, aantal tij- uren tijd. Uh, uren zelfs niet. Hè. <laughs> we zullen zien hoe lang het uh, kan duren. Goed, laten we er maar aan beginnen. Um, but before we start, really start, yes. let's maybe start by introducing our yes. guest, André. Welcome. Thank you very much. Thank you guys for the opportunity to be here, speaking with you guys. Be able to clarify a little bit of... Um, some questions that our supporters may have. Sure. So thank you for the opportunity to be here. More than welcome. I think it's a good opportunity as well for you to present yourself because people know your name, <laughs> evidently, and see... And the title. And the title, <laughs> and, uh, and, and a lot of people have opinions mm. about that. Yeah, But who is André Pinto? Yes, I mean, I think uh, I try to always separate the title from the name. I think the human side of the business is always uh, extremely important with these business we tend to be the pressure tends to make us forget about sometimes uh, who we are and uh, I come originally from Brazil um, from when I was 18 years old I lived and I lived until I was 18 in Brazil then I I played soccer until I was 17 18 in Brazil uh, in a in a club in a football mm-hmm. club of my my city Which, what, what's, uh, which city? city uh, Belo Horizonte. Okay. Uh, so it was a small club uh, uh, in the city in the, the, the youth categories. Then I had two uncles that had become professional. But Brazil is very big, a lot of teams, and uh, not, not many players are able to make uh, a living out of football despite mm-hmm. how good they were. And uh, based on my uncle's experience, I was my mother always asked me to study and play if I wanted to become a player. So when I was 18, I had an opportunity to go to the U.S. as an exchange student where I could learn English and also continue to play, uh, use my limited skills <laughs> to get uh, a football scholarship. I was always uh, fascinated by the game. And then uh, after um, seven years there, I finished my, my, graduate, my school. And then I had an opportunity to go to a semi-professional club, but the salary was so low that I knew I wouldn't be able to make a living out of it. So I decided to go for my graduate studies and, uh, and then love took me to Japan. Uh, okay. I never expected the furthest country from Brazil is Japan. <laughs> and um, after trying to find my way, learn the language, um, I did several different jobs um, and then One day when I was teaching uh, kids in school, uh, English uh, to kids in school, one of the teachers knew uh, somebody who worked in a professional club Mm -hmm. that needed a person who knew languages uh, to be able to support the sportive staff. This person was called uh, Takayuki Tateshi Mm -hmm. and uh, that's how the the story began. Uh, I'm very thankful to Mr. Tateshi for giving me my first opportunity in, in, in the professional business. And uh, since then, uh, it's been trying to prove myself every day as a foreigner to sh- try to show that um, I could improve, I could learn. And um, thanks to this uh, uh, bravery, let's put it like that, this resi- resi- resilience, I was able to 
come and had this opportunity to work here again with Mr. Tateshi. So, so love took you to Japan to, and Mr. Tateshi took you to Belgium. That's correct. <laughs> <laughs> great, great, great. So thank you for that. Thank I think you. it's important that we also know yeah, the people course, behind, behind the faces. Yeah, pleasure. Um, so let's maybe effectively start. Before we do that, it's an important note that I want to make. Uh, Sometimes, yeah, we, we discuss the rules up front. Mm -hmm. There are things that we cannot obviously of put into the open. Of course. Um, and so you are entitled to, of course, uh, exactly say this when, when mm -hmm. we are asking a question that is too sensitive. Other than that, we also both agreed mm -hmm. that, the, that fans deserve transparency. And we are very happy that you are willing to give that in the most in the extensive ways uh, ex most extensively as possible mm -hmm. okay so Nila maybe what the first question of, of one of our uh, of one of our listeners um, mm -hmm. yeah uh, the first one you I put uh, on the paper yes yeah? okay um, so we can imagine as a fan that you had a couple of intense weeks yes um, can you tell us how a typical day looks like during the transfer window? During the transfer window is, uh, I never, being a bicycle person, but I think it's a little bit like Tour de France. Yeah. <laughs> you know when you will start, but you have no idea how you end. So it's just, uh, you have to be able to save your energy uh, because you know it will be a long window. The mental side of the business, especially sometimes when you're chasing a player, for weeks and then all of a sudden the player chooses to go somewhere else. Uh, um, so to have this mental strength is something that uh, takes a lot, uh, is a lot uh, more difficult than people can expect. Mm -hmm. uh, we start, I uh, usually I'm early in the club where I can prepare myself and, and see what it's coming. Uh, I try to be as prepared as I can for the most important things that I have to do on that day. But sometimes something happens and completely throws you off balance. And then you have to go back and, and, and focus on, on, on the most important tasks. So that's a little bit how is my day. All day on the phone, messages. Uh, uh, you are home at night, but you are not. Uh, uh, ask my wife. <laughs> uh, so uh, it's very intense. And this, as the window begins to, 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 to shut, uh, let's put it as you approach, the end of the window, it becomes more intense and yeah. much more challenging. Yeah. And, uh, Maybe a question on that related to a question that we got of is uh, obviously, and we see, it's not only with Centrum that we see it, that the last days are very critical and crucial still of in course, the, transfer, of the transfer period. That being said, we already knew mm -hmm. quite advanced mm -hmm. that we would have lost, or we will be losing of a lot of our key mm -hmm. players. Mm -hmm. uh, some say mm -hmm. that we didn't react mm -hmm. on time. Mm -hmm. uh, to, to make of sure course. that they are replaced. Um, is that a sentiment that you share or, or what we obviously now mm -hmm. change course a little mm -hmm. bit at the end. Mm -hmm. So how mm -hmm. do you feel about that? I try to see it, uh, to do my job is important to see the in diff from different angles in regarding every different matter, each different matter. And in this case, I understand the supporters feeling from our side, what I can say is, for example, if you really look into the team and see our work, uh, uh, that because these players perhaps were already here, it's a little bit unnoticed. But, uh, uh, for example, Bokat, we brought Ogawa. At first, we didn't know uh, uh, Ogawa had not had a chance, so we still were not certain. We knew Ogawa from Japan is a player that we know since he's 17 years old. And then when he had this chance, we knew that he could replace. Okay, you can never replace uh, every human being is different. Yeah. Players are not uh, also not the same, uh, uh, but you can find similarities or different qualities that you can still work on. With Togawa, he might not have the same speed as Bokat, but he has good crosses and uh, he can be used uh, uh, in a very effective way uh, uh, with our strikers in the box. And I think uh, he already had goals and some assists. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, in the back, we bring, okay, Smats left, we had Taniguchi, we had Belaid. Uh, unfortunately, the paperwork procedure, that was, it took a little bit longer than we, we expected. Then in the middle, you already had Joel Chima. To, again, different than Matias Delors. I know Matias holds a, 
a special place in everyone's heart and especially also in mine for the relationship I have with his father and everything. But Joel came already uh, uh, a year later, already in preparation in case uh, uh, these players leave. Uh, uh, um, the only two that took a little bit longer is, is offensive players usually cost a little bit more. Zion, when before he was even sold, we already had Leo Bryant uh, already coming in. So this is the work that we do behind the scenes, but perhaps because we are not as vocal about it, uh, we work quietly. The can, people can have this idea that we are not preparing, but offensively, for example, Stukers took a little bit longer. And how do you replace a player like Coita? That is an answer that if you can answer and find a player that every year will come and score 13, 14, 15, 16 goals. Mm -hmm. Um, so it came a little bit later. Also, when you have a, a tight budget, you really need to be careful in how you use this money. And this is something that there is the budget. The supporters like it or not, we have to respect the budget. If I don't respect the budget, they will get another director that will. So um, this is how we have to work on. But I think offensively, these two took a little bit longer than we expected, but we are always looking for quality players, young players that have a resale value. And this mm -hmm. can be challenging to find. And when you're talking about budget, do you have some kind of metrics that you know at a certain point, this is a right budget or this is the right amount that we can use for this kind of player? Mm -hmm. Because I think it's very difficult that you're, uh, probably just Brahimi, mm -hmm. if you want to uh, buy him in, in the beginning of the transfer, he costs a lot, a lot more. Mm -hmm. How do you know what, what a reasonable price is? I well, think usually, usually you, uh, um, how do I say, when you are long enough in the business mm -hmm. and you're doing the business, you know more or less. Uh, uh, there are websites that give you a basis, even though sometimes they can be fully trusted but you can see based on the success of the player on the age of the player uh, 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 on the performance on data so all this influence in the in the amount of the player nationality uh, height uh, um, so uh, all this uh, um, influence so it's really case by case but okay. as a club when we are building the team we have to really see for example okay we are investing on a striker. So the budget, the main budget is designed for the striker. And until you find this striker, you really need to be careful with the budget, not to spend too much here. And then you have a hole that cannot be filled. So it's it's a little bit like a puzzle in a way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, at the same time, because uh, you notice, uh, you, you mentioned that you already were having uh, succession plans, mm -hmm. what they call mm -hmm. in corporate life, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. right a long time before that they, mm -hmm. they, actually, le they actually left. At the same time, two things that we need to consider or th mm -hmm. that we saw the mm -hmm. first couple of course, games, of course. we didn't win. Of course. It was not of course. good. Of course. Uh, so how is that to be explained? Because if you say, if you like, mm -hmm. obviously uh, things can go wrong, mm -hmm. but uh, what is your explanation? Uh, you, we are prepared. We have prepared for this. Mm -hmm. It has been changes. Changes have been done, and yet the results are not mm -hmm. coming in. I think it was a series of perhaps unexpected events uh, uh, that happened, and we are not as lucky. Okay, luck is not everything, but sometimes you have to have a little bit of luck in life. I think starting from the schedule to have such a tough schedule in the beginning with Underlet and then Antwerp away, and also Charleroi. Is, is it made uh, um, a lot of investments coming from last season. So three really tough opponents. The Olympics is also something that we predicted, but at the same time with the budget that we have is difficult. Again, you have other holes to fill and you know that these players will come back. So we also hope that perhaps they could come a little bit earlier uh, uh, um, also, we hope that the schedule could have been a little bit easier, uh, uh, that things would have worked a little bit more around uh, uh, in our favor. But it's also uh, unfortunate. This is also football. This is also life. And uh, instead of, uh, of uh, 
crying about it. We try to be proactive. We try to already make the adjustments as fast as possible to make sure that we put the team in the right track. And, and this takes a lot of work, a lot of time. And this is what, is what we have been doing mm-hmm. from uh, April all the way to now. Is it a fair assessment to say that, according in your mm-hmm. view, that mm-hmm. regarding or taking into account the budget that we have, mm-hmm. uh, that the best outcome was achieved in the, in the mid-season? Uh, you, uh, you, mean, you mean the beginning of the preparation? Yes, so like... I don't think it was the best outcome because I think the best outcome would have been uh, if we had uh, got a, a little bit more points and we are in six, seven points there. Uh, but in terms of it was, of it was yes, and also how do I say? To it's not that we didn't identify these players. Is that when you're going with the budget that we have, looking for quality players uh, uh, that we want takes time. For example, uh, Luis uh, uh, from Underlet, if we had asked in the beginning of the window, they would never, they wanted to sell him. Yeah. They couldn't find the amount that they expected mm-hmm. for the player. And then this opportunity came. And as a club, as a, a, a small, medium club, we have to look for these bargains to have the quality that we expect and our supporters expect. It wasn't. It was like this in the past. Gianni Bruno, uh, 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 Camada. Uh, uh, so it usually takes a little bit of time for you to give an example. When we signed Camada, there was also another possibility. A player called Oshimen was also available, and then he went to Charleroi and, and became the Oshimen that we know now. So these opportunities come. You can't wait. Uh, sometimes this long. But sometimes it's necessary to see, and, and the most important thing is that you remain calm, not believing in what you're doing, to find the right player. Even if now it's not going well, you still need to remain calm and also ready to make uh, changes if necessary. And that's what we've been trying to do, and that's what we've been doing for seven years. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You're talking about the budget and that you, we have to stick to the budget mm-hmm. and that that's and mm-hmm. we from a certain point we of course understand that and you're mm-hmm. doing that for seven mm-hmm. years now but for us or at least of course a lot of fans it's this year is also harder to understand while at the one hand mm-hmm. you earn mm-hmm. 20 million euros mm-hmm. based mm-hmm. on what we hear in mm-hmm. the and in, in, in the media um, and on the other hand we don't it looks like we don't invest mm-hmm. much. Mm-hmm. So that's mm-hmm. difficult to understand. There are a lot of fans, which I know, they're really complaining mm-hmm. about that. We have the money, they say, mm-hmm. and you, we don't invest it in mm-hmm. the same way as, mm-hmm. or, or, or we didn't prepare mm-hmm. ourselves for it. No, I fully understand. Uh, for many years, I was a supporter myself. Uh, uh, so I completely understand as a supporter, we hate the word finances until the finances are bad and then and then we start uh, paying attention a little bit more to the finances but uh, what i can say from my side is there is a hierarchy there is a owner there is a uh, board members they decide on the budget they decide on 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 the long term plan for the club uh, uh, um, and i have to respect sometimes it's not easy it's also for Mr. Tateshi is the same uh, in terms of uh, 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 being able to manage this budget. Well, what I can say to our supporters is we mean well. We are not always perfect. Uh, we do our very best for the club. It's a big responsibility to be here, to own a club uh, with so much tradition, uh, loved by so many. So we respect our supporters and we do our best. But also, we have to take under consideration that the club had a debt. This is something that we have to address. Again, I would understand our supporters if, uh, how do I say, we are blowing money, and uh, uh, how do I say, um, I'm, I'm going to Vegas with the club's money, or <laughs> we're buying a plane, or I this. <laughs> uh, so this, this I would understand, yeah. but it's, there is a plan behind, and maybe sometimes, maybe we have to be a little bit more vocal 
with our supporters to explain to them. But what, I know so, what is the plan? The plan is, um, first of all, to use this money first when the, the money that comes to the media is not the money that we receive. Because also when you buy players, you, you share percentage with other clubs, with players, with brokers, you pay commission. Uh, uh, so when you take this money, you take a lot less than what mm -hmm. maybe the media uh, uh, announces. So with this money, first of all, paying this debt, because I think if we, from the moment that we don't pay interest, because interest is just money that you're really giving away, mm -hmm. to reduce the interest, to be able to be a club debt-free, this is one of the main goals, together with the plan for the training center. I understand our supporters, uh, uh, it's not that we don't want to build the training center, but also our supporters need to understand that it's um, an agricultural area, an area where land, every land is being used for crops, for, for different things. So it's very difficult to find the perfect land. The prices were skyrockets until uh, now, I think we believe we might have a possibility, uh, um, but this, uh, um, how do I say, is a little bit is still under discussion, the plan and how this, I think it's for Mr. Tatecha to explain a little bit more sure. in detail. Yeah. And of course, to invest in the team, to invest in players. I think one of the things that our supporters ask in the beginning, and we take it very serious, the conversations we have, is to stop with loan players, with players that come on a loan and have no no, uh, how do I say, uh, uh, um, they, they, they don't generate, it's mainly sportive. So this is something every loan or most of the loans we try to do, there is a point behind, there is a buy option where if the player comes, we can, if it does well, we can sell it, resell it. So there is a plan behind the investment in the team. It took a little bit longer. We are more cautious than other clubs. This is, is also a cultural that means this could be something that our supporters do not like, but at the end of the day, the most important thing is that we can survive, we can continue to grow as a club. Sure. I think you touch on a very important point that was also brought up several mm -hmm. times in the questions that I saw is, we are, the financial fair play rules mm -hmm. are mentioned quite mm -hmm. a lot of mm -hmm. times. Uh, it's clear that with uh, with our current um, uh, management, mm -hmm. we are really looking out to mm -hmm. make sure that we meet ends mm -hmm. on, that, on that part. At the same time, we could ask questions on what other teams are doing. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, one of the most important things in sports, in, in every kind of field of, of, of mm -hmm. activity, I'd say is a level playing field. So how do you feel about uh, the apparent lack of a level playing field? Mm -hmm. Because you have, on the one hand, clubs that are really playing by the rules. On the other hand, you have clubs, without naming them, um, that are not playing by the rules. Mm -hmm. uh, how, do we, how do you maneuver on that and what is your position? I believe that, um, like I said, it's a big responsibility to manage a club like St. Jordan. The club belongs to our mm -hmm. supporters. Uh, uh, we are mainly managing the club, so we have this enormous respect for the people, for the supporters. And uh, thinking about that is important for us to be correct. I don't know what other clubs are doing. Maybe some of them are not playing by the rules. Uh, uh, it doesn't matter. What matters is at the end of the day, we can be seen, our supporters can be proud of having a correct club, of having people that perhaps are not as perfect uh, as they expect, but people that means well and treat the club with the respect that they deserve. Yeah. And this is, this is our philosophy. This is what we believe. Uh, um, and if we have to play dirty to win a tournament, perhaps it won't be us. Yeah. So, uh, I understand and also understand that it's quite difficult for you to, to really go into detail on that. On the other hand, I think that maybe we as fans looking at all of this happening, we, we might raise our voice and say, guys, yeah, it's, it's, I mean, for me, it's totally normal that you play by the rules, yeah. play by the rules. And uh, seeing others 
not playing it by the rules really makes us angry. Uh, and it's not your place, I know, but I think that a lot of fans are asking maybe also to be vocal more on that part as a mm-hmm. club as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, we are we are really risking a lot of mm-hmm. we're risking mm-hmm. a lot also to mm-hmm. to mm-hmm. to meet the goal of mm-hmm. playing by the rules. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. if others are not doing it again, mm-hmm. uh, it's time that they are held accountable. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That being said, maybe uh, some other questions because we have also <laughs> questions not related to, uh, <laughs> to the, real, uh, the rules of the game. And uh, yeah, Bert, uh, you, someone uh, in the audience, printed the Excel file that I made, but it's so small, I have to really, <laughs> really go really close by. Yeah, maybe something on uh, the fact that our young players, mm-hmm. uh, the players mm-hmm. last year that, mm-hmm. were, that were really well, um, in some cases, they had to leave uh, or they left mm-hmm. without, in the view of many supporters, mm-hmm. the right compensation. Mm-hmm. Uh, is there any plan of action uh, to avoid a similar thing happening? Or um... We, how do I say, uh, I think every player, it's case by case. I think uh, in the football business, sometimes you win more, sometimes you lose a little bit more. It's just uh, uh, for us, for example, taking each individual case. Uh, uh, um, so, for example, for, for Stukers, he came from a bad experience with the previous coach that wasn't using him. Mm-hmm. He didn't want to renew for us as a club, for our supporter. It was a dream that we had to see these players wearing our uniform. We knew Stukers, I think it was the first youth player that we really saw the quality right away uh, uh, um, i think age difference is a little bit older uh different generation i think than 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 matthias for example matthias was still a little bit younger at the time and uh so based on that we could find a solution to renew okay we had to 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 give in a little bit in order to be able to we We've lost financially, perhaps, uh, uh, in, in some of our supporters' view, but understanding the situation the way we did, we actually made money when we could have completely lost it yeah. empty-handed. So that goes a little bit case by case. Of, ca- of course, as a club, we're always trying to improve. We're always trying to see there's always a bigger risk. Uh, maybe you get one of these young players and you sign a much longer agreement with much better finances. But again, you might lose a lot more. You might don't win as much, but you also lose. So it's always a, it's a little bit like shares. You see uh, Apple shares uh, 50 years ago, maybe you buy our bitcoins or whatever. So maybe if you buy 50 euros, you lose less but you gain less. Mm. So it's a little bit the same concept. But for us, one of the most important things at that time, it was to see that, uh, to to make sure that our supporters and us, we could see these players wearing uh, uh, the STVV uniform and succeeding in the first team and leaving from the front door. So uh, this was also something that our supporters always asked us to have local players, the club's identity, and you was, Despite we are not making as much money, I think it was a very nice to have them in our 100th year anniversary playing for us and in front of our, our supporters. And uh, don't get me wrong, but uh, still we, we didn't make as much as we could have, but this was also something very priceless to, to be able to watch and see. Uh, and at the end, we also made money. Okay, perhaps we didn't make as much money with Stukers, but we made it with Zion. Mm. So that's a little bit. Sometimes you lose, sometimes you win. You cannot be too greedy sometimes. You have to understand also the market. I understand our supporters' feelings. It hurts. It hurts me as well. I've been here for seven years. I, I, I'm getting more and more the, the, the passion of our supporters and everything. So... It was, uh, um, at the same time, disappointing to see, but rewarding to be able to, to see them and give this gift to our supporters in our 100th year anniversary. You mentioned the transfer of Zion. Is that something that you, uh, where we earn more than you expected? Not really. I think Zion, we knew. 
uh, that he was going to explode. I mm -hmm. think Zion, because the problem with Zion is that he was playing under a legend in Urawa Reds, and we knew because of our connections, especially Mr. Tateshi, uh, uh, we knew the potential of the player, but we didn't expect it to be this soon. Because when you get a player, you already had an offer for 10 million from Man United, so you already know that just this offer will attract a lot of offers. Uh, um, so we knew uh, uh, when we signed Zion, before we signed, because we are already signing Zion when uh, Reds, when uh, Man United came. There was an international game under 20 between Japan and, and the Netherlands, and Man United scout went to see the, the, the goalkeeper, the Dutch goalkeeper, and then they saw Zion, and, and it blew their mind, and, and that's how the whole story started. Okay. Coming back maybe to the younger players, mm -hmm. eh? uh, they both, or they both, they all got the opportunity to play at a smaller team in the lower mm -hmm. division. Mm -hmm. um, as far as I know, mm -hmm. we are not doing this today with our younger mm -hmm. players, or, or is there a reason for it? Or? I think this project is, is, is tailor-made, so it has to be a win-win situation. We have to have the right players, we have to have the right clubs. We're still searching, there were some possibility for some players that we wanted to send on a loan, but the clubs did not want okay. to take on the challenge or the league was not what we expected mm -hmm. but definitely we are looking into this this was our plan all along also you need the quality because of course the experience helps but you have to have the quality to back it up we are very lucky with Matthias Delorge with uh, uh, Yarna and also mm -hmm. with Rain so this is something that we are always following the market for good opportunities that will be good for everyone. Great. Yeah, please. No, no, Go ahead. Yeah. no I think that uh, we, we asked a lot of questions mm -hmm. already on <laughs> what has happened the last couple yes. of months. Uh, maybe a more open question. Sure. And, and after every milestone mm -hmm. in business, it's the same mm -hmm. thing. Mm -hmm. you, you sit back and make mm -hmm. it's already mm -hmm. very early because no. it's only Monday. And, <laughs> yes. Uh, but looking back, um, can you identify some successes and maybe also some points to, to mm -hmm. work on? Mm -hmm. No, I think uh, when you look back, in order to fully understand the present, you have to go back to the very beginning, where everything started, where the club was, what we are able to build together with everyone, to be able to bring two cultures that are completely different together, uh, uh, I can say now that we are much more united with our, our staff now, it's just one unit. Uh, uh, our supporters through the conversations that we have, it's not easy to, to put your face there with our supporters and answer their questions. I don't know how many clubs do uh, it. So this is, uh, um, how do I say, an accomplishment to be able to build these relationships to be able to bring our youth to the level that we expected, uh, uh, um, to, be, to bring a club that was fighting for relegations to the eighth, ninth position overall uh, 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 in the financial stability. So this, for me, when we look at overall, is a story of success, not, not my story, but our story. This is what we build together because we cannot do anything alone. Mm -hmm. Our supporters, our board members, our staff. So this for me is a success. Uh, uh, um, looking at back, uh, okay, can always get better. I think football is very dynamic to the point that you have to always be uh, 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 paying close attention to changes or how you can improve yourself, how you can improve the club, mm -hmm. how you can improve your staff. Uh, so there's still a lot of work yeah. to be done. Uh, thank you, but that's a good answer for indeed mm -hmm. looking back mm -hmm. seven years mm -hmm. in time mm -hmm. and, and mm -hmm. we could elaborate on mm -hmm. that as well. But if you look now the last couple of months, this mm -hmm. transfer... Mm -hmm. uh, I think it was difficult. The beginning was very difficult under the circumstances and we always know that uh, the fact that the competition starts so early, you finish, it's, it's, it's a little bit, uh, uh, um, how do I say, uh, it's, it's extremely challenging to finish a season and then you have in two, three weeks, your team is already back training. Mm -hmm. So you have two weeks to perhaps replace five, six, seven, eight. And, and the Belgium competition is a competition that attracts a lot of, uh, 
of scouts, a lot of clubs. And so a lot of big clubs uh, have to sell and they sell, it's difficult to keep players. So I think we started in a very difficult situation, but by being calm, by working extremely hard, we are able to make the right changes, the right adjustments to make sure that we bring the team to achieve the goals that we expect. I was thinking when, when you explained this, uh, did we at a certain point maybe underestimate the, the, the quality of our group in the beginning of the competition? Um, not necessarily. Um, I think we, we knew that it was going to be difficult. Uh, we were very realistic about it. We sp spoke with, uh, with uh, uh, Christian Latanzio uh, about a plan A and plan B for these uh, two games. We did, again, we didn't expect such a tough uh, calendar. And I think mm -hmm. over the years, our start has always been more or less uh, 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 good uh, uh, with winnings in, in the first matches, uh, uh, which gives you a little bit of, of breathing time. Um, but no, uh, uh, we expect it to be difficult, but it was more challenging than we predicted. Mm -hmm. And this is also football. Sometimes it doesn't go as plenty happens to, to, to its life. The most important thing is to keep a positive mind, to keep working, to believe in what you're doing is correct, to keep looking for the right players and not panic. Because if you bring older players, they might you might be safe, but at the same time, oh, you are not going to be able to continue. We are a club that rely a lot on on selling players, so it's important that for us to continue to grow, to take our time, despite not having time to find the right players to be able to 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 play well and also be able to sell them in the future because when i compare your uh, transfer window mm -hmm. last year mm -hmm. with the one this year i noticed that we did a lot of transfers last year before the season began mm -hmm. more than this year mm -hmm. while at the same time we we, we had a lot of outgoing mm -hmm. transfers mm -hmm. so it's a little bit of uh, mm -hmm. what we didn't expect mm -hmm. actually as a thing. Mm -hmm. We also didn't expect, I think every window is very unique. Uh, again, you never know what to expect from each window. Uh, um, but talking specifically about this uh, last window, for example, we already had more or less the basic team. Okay. And this made a big difference. Uh, if you think about it, you already had Hashioka, you already had Smets, you already had uh, Bocat, you already had Matias Delorge, uh, you didn't have uh, Yotaro that came in July, uh, but again, a player coming from Japan that nobody really know. If you get a player from Europe, you would be a lot more costly of that quality. Um, in the wings, you already had Stukers. Uh, on the left side, you already had Abu. Up front, that we still needed a little bit, but Kaya was there, uh, uh, um, and that was uh, um, so. You almost had, I think, the goalkeeper and Ryotaro, and having being able to have this continuity is important, mm -hmm. and this is something that is very challenging because we have to rely on 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 selling, and the idea is that we continue to grow for to the point that we don't have to rely so much in selling players and we have we can give this continuity to the team is that not a little bit the unfortunate side effect of what's going on right now we were maybe at the point that we were not so heavily mm -hmm. reliant on selling people selling some mm -hmm. uh, players but let's be frank and we, mm -hmm. we don't have to turn a blind eye on that of we course. see what we see of course we needed the quality that we purchased in the last minutes of mm -hmm. the deadline mm -hmm. uh, the feeling with a lot of fans, mm -hmm. maybe also with myself, mm -hmm. is that we might need some more. Mm -hmm. uh, this is going to cost. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, but again, if uh, last season, the beginning of last season, I don't think many people believe in the team that we had. Mm -hmm. 
I did saw you? a lot. We did. We always do. Because, uh, yeah, we always do. We, always we, always do. Do. we have to believe in what we If I don't believe in if my players, it, then, then <laughs> you know. No, no, but it was, it, it, uh, it was a question that I had from the beginning because it turned out so well. Uh, they, they played yes. so well. Mm -hmm. But if I, I remember I was in Kortrijk. I think it was the first game last year. Mm, the second one. The second one? Yes, because. The first was so bad. Yes, yes. Yeah, but, but, but at the Kortrijk, it was the first time that it noticed like the Stokers and. Mm -hmm. But I was thinking, is this now pure chance or is this really a planned mm -hmm. thing? I think what we try to do as well, and, and, and again, I never built a boat in my life, but I imagine that building a football team or constructing a football team is like building a boat. You don't know what you get until you put on the water. Sometimes you tilt, sometimes right, left, and you have to maneuver through this. Last season, the idea was just like this season. It was to use as many young players as possible in these games, in these matches, to see what they are made of, and it worked. In this season, it took us a little bit longer. Uh, the players didn't go, uh, the things didn't go as well as we planned uh, 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 for different reasons. Uh, uh, um, so, But we still wanted to give opportunity to our young players in the beginning to hoping that they would come. It's still sometimes a little bit too soon. Sometimes players takes a little bit. There's no criticism to, to, to any of them. They all did their very best, but sometimes it takes a little bit of time. Sometimes how the coach sees it. Uh, uh, some coaches see it very quickly. Oh, this player has to play on the right. This player has to play on the right. On the left, this player has to play. So this also makes a big difference. The eye of and, and understanding the position, understanding the best system that will match the players that we have. Mm -hmm. And uh, and sometimes you also need a little bit of luck. And uh, that's a little bit uh, uh, last season. This season, the plan behind was more or less the same to bring. We brought a lot of young players from the second team, but the age difference, they are a lot younger than the previous players. So it takes a little bit longer. There are two things <laughs> that mm -hmm. I want to ask about that. The first one is, you're, you talk about the age. Um, mm -hmm. There are young players, but what we see in the last couple of days of the transfer window, you still bought young players. Mm -hmm. And I think from us as fans, we expected that, there were, that we would buy more experienced mm -hmm. players who know the competition mm -hmm. maybe. Mm -hmm. And now mm -hmm. we still think it's a guess uh, or a risk that we rely on young players mm -hmm. like Ferrari, mm -hmm. like the mm -hmm. others that we, mm -hmm. Del Pupo. Mm -hmm. That's for us, that's still a risk. Mm -hmm. While if we went for the more experienced mm -hmm. players, that would give us a more confidence, I think, like mm -hmm. we did back then in Bruce. the winter uh, uh, transfer window with, with Bruls, with mm -hmm. um, Boyo. Boyo. Mm -hmm. That's where, where, where mm -hmm. we still uh, mm -hmm. think that's a risk. No, I think, uh, uh, again, is, is the plan is to continue to grow. And it's to continue to grow. Okay, you have to have a balance. And we have players. We have Tadiguchi. We have uh, 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 your coupons that it's always really involved. We have uh, Godot. These players are, are leaders of the team. Uh, but it's important for us to continue to invest in players that have the quality was the same as last season. You didn't have these experienced players in the team. You had the young quality that came together. So our idea is to make sure that we have to do something different, guys, if we want to grow. That's the truth. If we continue to go for players that uh, are older and have no resale value, we might stay in the competition every year. We might finish 12th or, or, or 11th or 10th. If our supporters are happy with this, if it's just that is the goal, I completely understand and I want them to tell me. But our goal is bigger than this. Our goal is to continue to be able to sell players, to be able to grow, to be able to invest back in the club. Sometimes it takes time and sometimes it doesn't go as planned. Mm -hmm. But we need to believe in what we are doing to be able to grow is a is a is a 
is do or die in a way. Because look, look at last season, the financial problems of a lot of clubs, or, 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 or it's, 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 it's something that people should be concerned. You know, it's, 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 you can invest, you can have great players, but if the bill doesn't add up towards the end of the season, you have a big problem. But at the same time, you have the risk of the relegation. Of course. Which also costs a Of lot course, money. of course. Uh, uh, um, and that's why we are trying to make the changes. Again, the boat is tilting. We're trying to bring it back. If it doesn't work, the window in December will be a total different window. Then maybe that time we might need this experience there. But also what our supporters need to understand is, and they want players fast, is that when you make a mistake with a player, that's a two, three years mistake that you have to live with mm -hmm. because it's very costly to send these guys away. So when you take a player of, uh, of 32, 33, 34, and you do a two years, a three years agreement, it's something that, okay, with uh, the players are beginning to, how do I say, with the technology, they can extend their careers longer, they can play at the highest level longer. But the resale value for a club like us uh, uh, is different. The, 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 the financial plan that we have is different from a bigger club, for example. A Bruges, for example, is, is, is to win titles. And, and, and these, we want to win. Don't get us wrong. We want to win. We want to go as far as we can. But it's important that we continue to develop and sell these players mm -hmm. for the future. And this, it's, it's, it's risky. Yeah. But then I ask you a question, do we take risk or we just get the players that we know that will stay in the competition? We'll be always in the, in the going up and down because you never know. Also, how do I say, uh, 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 the atmosphere in the locker room is also something that you have to concern. But the main thing is signing the wrong player means that you have two, three years to deal with. Is there any chance that you still go for three players? I think uh, uh, at this point, no. Uh, if at some point there were also still, we wanted to do a little bit more towards the end of, of the window, but also we have to keep the balance of, of, of the team. So we try to look for a solution for a few players to be able to bring some other players, also finances and everything. but. When you have two, three, four players for one position, it's not a healthy group to stay. You're not going to be happy knowing that you have four players in front of you and only one place. Mm -hmm. So this is something that we also were very careful about it. Uh, uh, um, so we hope that perhaps it's better than act out of, uh, how do I say, uh, emotion. It's better to be able to, Mazu is coming, he still needs to analyze the group, and then we can be prepared and save this budget that we have for the winter transfer where we know exactly what we'll need and who can, can leave, for example. So, well, I think that, to summarize a little bit, mm -hmm. uh, there are two Im important points in the old story. Mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. First of all, the million-dollar question, mm -hmm. literally, yes. it's about the money. <laughs> Yes. Um, I think uh, it's something that obviously is very difficult for you to answer, but I think I want to share the concern mm -hmm. that a lot of supporters mm -hmm. have is, are we in the right, uh, do we have the right budget mm -hmm. to compete at the level that we want to be at? Mm -hmm. And w is it not the case that we should consider to mm -hmm. make, to have, to, <laughs> to look mm -hmm. for a more mm -hmm. budget? Of course, it's mm -hmm. easier said than done. Mm -hmm. Because I have the feeling that the last seven years we did very well with the mm -hmm. budget that we had. Mm -hmm. um, and I, But I've always said, Yes, you can always aim a little bit higher mm -hmm, and, mm -hmm. and you achieve the goal. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But with the amount of budget that you have, mm -hmm. you will always have to look down mm -hmm, the day mm -hmm, as well. Mm -hmm. So it's it's really mitigating mm -hmm. that. So obviously it's more a question of mm -hmm. strategy. Um, but I believe it's, how do I say, it's, it's, it's a plan. I think the most important thing is that we don't just go and, and fill the air and oh, we go here, we go there. There's a plan behind. So this is the most important for a supporter to know that uh, we have a plan and the plan is to be able, like I said, we don't want to rely on transfers as much. And that's why 
we are trying to generate this profit to continue to grow because it's, it's, it's difficult for us to generate profit. Also, I want our supporters to try to, to work with us and, and think a little bit how we do. How do you generate uh, profit? You either have sponsors, which Belgium companies would prefer these big companies to, 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 to sponsor Bruges or Underlet because they have more supporters, they have uh, more visibility. Then we go to Japan, uh, uh, where we get some very good sponsorship money, uh, unthinkable of the work that our staff does behind the scenes to bring these uh, 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 sponsorship, uh, selling shirts, um, uh, stadium uh, um, TV money, and selling players. So the idea is that as we continue to grow, we can attract better sponsors, get more TV money. Exactly. And, and, and that's, yeah. that's the plan behind. Yeah, and that's always a tight rope because on the one hand, you want to maybe invest a little bit more to take the financial risk to get to a place higher than you are right now. But at the same time, you cannot... Of course. <laughs> if, you, if you fail, you fail, you, you fail, fail big. Yes, yes. I try not... I have a budget and we have to work with this budget. Uh, uh, also, there are clubs that perhaps have even less budget or more difficulty with uh, uh, debt handling and all this. Uh, uh, we have to focus on ourselves. We have to, to believe that what we are doing is, is going to work. And if it doesn't, we are also ready to make adjustments here and there the way we are doing six matches, maybe some people, oh, it's too soon, but we already see it. We already yeah. make the adjustments. So always looking into the right direction, being positive and believing in what we are doing. Sure. On the ambition, and we, I'm going to wrap up a little mm -hmm. bit soon, a little uh, soon, but uh, on the ambition, one of the questions that came a lot as well yes. was, what about uh, the, um, the cup? The cup? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because we are... The last seasons, we have the impression, we had the impression, or at least mm -hmm. a couple of seasons, that we are not focusing mm -hmm. on that. While, mm -hmm. while it is the mm -hmm. shortest way to of Europe, course. Um, how does the club look at the cup? And, and yeah, what is I, the ambition? I know, there? I think uh, every tournament that we get in, we try to do our best. I think one thing that you have to take under consideration is that you have 16 clubs. Out of these 16 clubs, we can say that the big five no longer exists. Now you have a big six, big seven clubs that have a lot more resources. So if you have 30 matches, 14 matches are against these clubs. And then you have middle clubs that made a lot of investment. So the Belgium competition came from one club going down to two and a half going down. That makes it extremely challenging. And to be honest, last season, for example, all I had in my mind was the meeting that we had with our supporters that said, we have a curse and uh, we got relegated in 50 years, the 100 years, <laughs> we cannot get relegated. And, and uh, this was our main focus for this season. I hope that we can challenge both competitions, but depends also on how our performances at that moment it also sees how, how our group is developing and then we have to make a decision, injuries, and then we have to make a decision based on, on this. But regardless of the players that are on the pitch, we always go for a win. Okay, that's clear. Last question maybe for you, unless you have another. Uh, but we yeah, now I have... Didn't, a new <laughs> I don't know <laughs> what you're going to ask. Well, we, are, we didn't talk about our new mm -hmm. coach. Yet. Yes. So I was wondering... Um, what is your feeling with Matsu? Uh, yeah, how, how uh, it was go? when we first met. Uh, to be honest, uh, Mazu was uh, a coach that we've been following for for a long time. When we came in 2017, he was doing very well with Charleroi. Charleroi was playing very uh, nice football. I think they were fighting in the top uh, of the competition, and uh, they were very good. We're like, who is this coach? Then we kept an eye when he was in Union uh, and we tried to, uh, to see if uh, uh, he's going to leave Union, if he's going to, the, I think they're still in second division. And uh, at that time he, was, he decided to stay, so it wasn't possible. 
And then now, when we're finally able to discuss and sit with him, what uh, called our attention the most was the similarity in the way he sees the players, that he sees the team, he sees the formation, he thinks about planning, about using these players. So this was very surprising. He's a coach that knows 350 games uh, uh, in the competition. I told Peter Deloge that he's going to pass him. And <laughs> uh, so he's a coach that has a lot of experience and, uh, and knows the shortcuts of the competition and knows the players. So you play, a, you play a team against, for example, you play Leuven. He knows the players. He was active uh, uh, three, four months ago. So this, in a, in a period, in a moment like this, we don't have any time to waste. We need a, a specialist that can come and, and already identify. Today uh, was his first meeting with the player, and, and it was so powerful that uh, you could see in the training how the players reacted. So, uh, uh, so far, uh, it's been uh, uh, very good, and we have uh, um, a lot of hope uh, for the future. Mm -hmm. I think, when I speak for myself, I think that I also have a good um, feeling with, with mm -hmm. Manzu, because he knows the competition. He has some kind of um, aura that, that gives confidence. His mm -hmm. press conference mm -hmm. was mm -hmm. already spot on. Mm -hmm. So he, 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 he that, that's the one that's a good fit, but it's a little bit contrary to the feeling that we had with the previous coach mm -hmm. and also with why did we decide to go for the previous coach mm -hmm. while Mazu was also free. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it's like why mm -hmm. now when mm -hmm. we maybe had mm -hmm. him at the beginning of mm -hmm. the season, it could have been already better mm -hmm. than, mm -hmm. than it is now. Mm -hmm. No, uh, uh, for example, for, for Christian, uh, we believe Christian is a good coach when we analyze him also because we went so well with the previous coach coming from, from overseas and not having uh, any Belgium experience. Uh, um, so also we had to react very quickly under the circumstances because until the very last minute, we are not so certain what was going to happen. Uh, um, so we decided to bring him. Unfortunately, it didn't go as we planned for different reasons. Also, uh, I can't fully blame Christian for, for everything. Also, we have our responsibility. The players were not here when visa procedures and all of these things kept it, uh, things more, made things more difficult. But um, now it's time to look. Uh, the most important thing is now, I believe we, we got it right. And, uh, and now we focus on, on our future, on, on continuity. And uh, we really need all of you guys, all of our supporters. Again, we are not perfect, but we really need them. If with them is already difficult, without them is impossible. So. Uh, Will there be an, a change in how we play? Or I think so, but uh, because next game is such a crucial game, uh, yeah. <laughs> I think we're going to play with 10 strikers just to... <laughs> <laughs> Optimism is a uh, <laughs> Just uh, uh, to make things more difficult for the opponent. No, to, to be honest, uh, I think it's too soon to, to speak. I think he will have to have a feeling in this week, in the trainings, and try to find... Uh, the right formation, the right players. Uh, of course, he has already a, a formation, in, uh, a formation, not necessarily which player will play under this formation, but uh, um, I think our supporters will see a total different team on the pitch. We are hoping it with you. <laughs> Thank we you. We'll be witnessing it from the Thank stands. Thank you, guys. Thank you very Thank much you. Always for the support. Uh, the support always and uh, Whatever I can do, uh, I'm always available. Uh, if our supporters have any questions, uh, uh, just uh, come to the training center for a training and uh, they can ask as long as with respect because at the end of the day, we all have families and we do our best for us, for our family, and uh, uh, I really respect them and uh, really appreciate all the support. Good especially in bad times. So uh, thank you very much uh, to all of them, to you guys always. Uh, and I hope to be able to uh, 
that we can uh, uh, improve uh, uh, and bring STVV to the position where we know we can be. Thank you, Andre. Thank you very much. Everything <laughs> you're candid, you're very candidly up and open about Thank everything. You. So uh, obviously, we will not we will not have answered all of the questions <laughs> of, of the of, of the supporters. More than hundred. More than hundred, <laughs> and I know also people might be yes, uh, yeah. disappointed mm -hmm. not having it, but I guess as we move on, questions will be of answered. Course. Mm -hmm. Of course. And let's hope in the good way. Thank you very much. Just uh, to finalize, I think it's important for our supporters, they don't have to agree with everything. But the reason why I come and I want to speak is that at least they understand where we come from. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, this is the least we can do. Uh, explain where we come from. If they don't agree, it's also football. Everyone has their own opinion. It's also the beauty of the game. But I want them to know that we work very hard with a lot of respect uh, and, and uh, uh, gratitude for their support. Thank you. Thank you very much. So if you don't mind, I'm going to switch, switch back into Dutch. Yes. We're going to go back to the Netherlands. Niele, we can now go back to the Netherlands. Ik heb al gezegd in het Engels ook dat ik hoop dat de supporters er iets van opgestoken mm -hmm. hebben. Ik hoop het ook. Uh, ja. Ik vond het interessant. Ik vond Open het... een volwassen gesprek. We doen ons best om volwassen te zijn. <laughs> uh, want er even staat er zonder meer, dus nee. we kunnen eigenlijk zeggen wat we willen. Nee, maar inderdaad, nu, er zullen allicht wel heel veel reacties komen. Mensen die misschien niet eens zijn, mensen mm -hmm. die zich, uh, uh, ja, of die wat boos zijn, of die mensen die dat wel eens zijn, alles mag, alles kan. Uh, we nodigen jullie uit om dat ook te delen met ons uh, via onze social media. Uh, ik denk dat het alleen maar belangrijk is dat we allemaal samen aan één uh, touw trekken, toch Niele? Dat klopt. Allee, we kunnen ontevreden zijn, maar ik denk dat het nu vooral een kwestie is van uh, voor die, uh, die betere plaatsen in de stand te gaan. En daar kunnen wij mee, aan, uh, mee voor zorgen. Klopt. Uiteindelijk, uh, en André heeft het ook al gezegd, uh, we zijn allemaal passanten in, in de geschiedenis van onze club. Ja. Hè? Uh, we bestaan 101 jaar. De geelblauwe vlag wappert al 101 jaar boven de Truinse velden. En wij zijn er maar een, een passant in een deel van. En ik denk dat het belangrijk is, de belangrijkste boodschap die ik wil geven om te eindigen, is dat we, we staan voor een moeilijke opdracht als team, als club, als, als, als STVV. En ik denk dat we iedereen gaan nodig hebben de volgende dat... wedstrijden om er vol achter te staan. En dat wil ik niet zeggen, zoals we dat straks, zoals we nu getoond hebben, dat we niet kritisch kunnen zijn. In klopt, tegendeel. Klopt. Samen gaan we vooruit. Voilà, Niel, ik denk dat daarmee alles gezegd is. Ja, ja ik denk het ook, ja. Oké, okay. dan dank ik nog eens. Thank you, André, thank once you more. <laughs> thank you, STVV, for arranging the material, uh, mm. the audio. So, sorry for the... Uh, back to Dutch. Sorry <laughs> dat jullie ons allemaal moeten zien hebben. Ik, ik neem aan dat jullie ook wel mooiere dingen zouden kunnen zien op YouTube-scherm. Uh, als ik naar mezelf kijk dan vooral. Uh, maar het is toch altijd fijner om een beeld te hebben. Dank u, STVV. Tot een volgende keer. Tot een volgende week.